couple of demonstrations to do with electromagnetic induction and where we come across this in practice. And you've all seen one of these guys before. It's a wine of parts. You also get, you just turn it on here, and you get, so you charge it by winding it up. You've all seen wind-up torches. Here's a smaller version of them. You can get it for three or four euros at this stage. And they're quite powerful now that they're now putting LEDs in here, which means they can run on very little power, because LEDs are much more efficient than the old filament light bulbs. So how does one of these work? Well, they're called wind-up torches, but often you'll see them advertised as Faraday torches, which is a nice more appropriate name because it's still based on Faraday's law and the electromagnetic induction. How do they work? Well, I think the easiest way to see is to take one apart. So you will notice inside here you've got a metal of some description, which you would almost guess you've got a coil of wire, so what do you reckon that metal will be? Magnet. Magnet. I'll try uh, to edit out the other bits. It's a <laughs> magnet. You've got a coil of wire and a magnet. So you put a magnet in and out of a coil of wire, what's the first thing that's going to happen? EMF. EMF is induced. What will that EMF have induced in if assume it's, assuming it's a full circuit? Current. A current. And that current is going to power a light bulb. So, but there's a couple of other very interesting bits and pieces that are inside here. So let's just take it apart to begin with. There we go. So we got it. So that's just a back bit we're not particularly interested in. This is the bit we're interested in. You've got a magnet and you've got a coil of wire. Okay. <laughs> this is the interesting bit. <laughs> Who said I? <laughs> what we really want to focus on, if I can take this bit off here, and for that I need a hammer. No, we don't. This is the interesting bit. You take one of these apart. You have one of those big green guys. You want to guess what they are? Capacitors. Capacitors. Because if you think about it, you want this to store and to slowly release charge when it's not being winded up. So it's the equivalent of a battery. It's slowly releasing charge. The other thing you've got in front, we said, so there's an amount of physics inside here. This guy is what? LED. It's an LED, light emitting diode, so it's a semiconductor. We've got our capacitor, and now we've got four of these. What are these guys called? Diodes. Diodes. If you've got four diodes in an arrangement, <laughs> what do we use four diodes for? You don't need to know this is part of the normal course, but we did refer to it once or twice. Four diodes in a circuit. And we come across the concept stop. of a rectifier. Stop so a simple diode would just stop it going in one direction and block it automatically. If you've got four of them, you can redirect the current so that it's always going in the same direction. So it's known, uh, well, in fact, a rectifier is a diode just blocks it going in one direction. Four of them put together is known as a rectifier, and that redirects it when it's going in the wrong direction so that you constantly have current going in the right direction. Okay? So there's all sorts of physics. You've got the diodes, you've got a capacitor, you've got LEDs, and you've got electromagnetic induction coming on with the magnet and the coil of wire. All inside one small little torch that you can get for two or three years.